This week on Pure Brews America, I discover the sweet secret behind Bean Nectar, our first ever visit to a craft meadery. And then things turn sour when we head down to Bloomington, Indiana for a look behind the scenes at Upland Brewing Company. I'm Shannon Long, founder of Brew Export, and I want to welcome you to Pure Brews America. Join me as I travel across Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois on a journey to discover the amazing stories, people, and places that make up the craft beer industry's greatest breweries. Hey, it's Shannon Long, and today I'm in Ferndale, Michigan, dropping in on the Bee Nectar Half Pipe. <laughs> I don't know, it's been here for so long. I've actually, this is the first meadery I've ever been to. Oh, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of fun. We've been coming for about six years when they were just down the road. Um, I love all the different flavors and the experiments that they do. It's a super inventive place. They got a lot of different flavors out there, a lot of different things to choose from, different styles of, of the mead and the cider and stuff. It's a, it's a lot of fun to come try different things. Yeah, they have so many different ones that they offer that there's something anybody can find that they like. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of beer, so when you say you're coming to Bee Nectar, I've had a few of them, and I've liked all of them so far, so I want to come down here and try a huge list of what they got here. It's nice to have a different option than beer. It's a nice place to hang out. They let you bring in your own food. There's lots of different events that they have. We enjoy coming to their festivals that they have quarterly, because then we can really like sample all the different ones that they offer. You know, we've enjoyed bringing our, our family here and introducing them to Mead. I think we were camping or something, and he mentioned something about brewing a beer, and I was like, wait a minute, I brew beer, so. <laughs> Come on over! Yeah, so then we just, you know, we started hanging out brewing beer. I've been home brewing a long time. Paul had been home brewing a long time. Carrie and I were in a home brew club that really got into mead. We got to try a lot of really great meads that, you know, I didn't even know that kind of stuff existed, and then when we lo went looking for it commercially, it was really hard to find. You know, I was looking for a job, and, drinking the mead and I'm like, this is really good. Why don't we just sell this? He's like, yeah, all right. I'm like, okay, good, done. If we could sell like, 10 cases a month, man, that'd be kind of cool, you know? Like, and then I got laid off. Like, all right, we're gonna move to Silicon Valley and foreclose on the house where we're gonna go all in on the meadery. And she's like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we didn't have any contingency plan for something like that. So, and I think it was like a few days later, he texted me a tank picture of a thousand liter tank that he bought. And we were, I mean, we were only brewing in little 30 gallon batches at the time. So, I mean, that's a big jump, you know, it's 265 gallons. It's a scary time when you're underfunded as a business in general, and you're trying to develop a product that you just believe in, but there's really no evidence that it's gonna work. It takes a toll on relationships. You know, it takes a toll on your sanity. It takes a toll on the color of your hair. I think I was probably like the only one that from the get go, I had the idea of, I thought it was gonna be big and they thought it would be nights and weekends. And I'm like, yeah, we'll see. It was so crazy. We ended up getting uh, what is the like, top 100 brewers in the world. It was in like 2013 and then again in 2014, I think. And it was like no meadery was on that list. Now that we know how the meadery came to be, let's find out how they make the mead. Hey, Steven. Hi. <laughs> how are you? So we're about to do, I think, the most important thing for mead is the honey, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're... you can't have it without it. We work with honey, and honey is 100% fermentable sugar right from the get-go. It's very simple, and that's basically what, what differs in the process, whereas beer you do about 70% of your work up front in the brew process. We do about 30% of our work up front in the, the actual making process and the mixing. Most of our job comes after we have pitched and it's, it's, it's nursing the yeast along and giving it the proper nutrient that it requires to grow, propagate, and make us look pretty. So what's step one? Step one is take the lid off. Woo! That smells really good. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is this is orange blossom honey. And Stick this back here. Put that there. Awesome, Jawsome. All right, and then that can go anywhere in here. Just if you want to lean that out over here. There we go. Cool beans. If you want to do me a huge favor and just scoop up, nice chunk of honey. 
just like It's a little warm. Oh, it's very warm. You actually have to heat up honey to get it into a liquid pumpable state. And you just want to pour that guy right into that little hole. Okay. Making it easy for you today. And what do we, why are we doing this? So we use a pump to move the honey from the drum into the tank. And the style of pump that we use uh, requires that you pre-prime the pump. My aim's not that great. <laughs> oh, oh. So now we're actually going to turn this guy on and I'm gonna kneel like a lady. We're just gonna open this gate and start it up. And so all four of these uh, vats of honey go into this fermenter? Yep. So good. <laughs> Once the meat is done fermenting, it needs to be filtered. All right, Tony, so you are the master of filtration here at Beauty Nectar. Yep. Is that your official little job title? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> For today it is. All right. Tell me, this is a pretty hefty piece of machinery. What exactly does it do? Um, this is our fourth and final filter before uh, packaging. It's a cross flow filter. Bad stuff goes that way, good stuff goes this way for packaging. What does it look like before it goes through here? It's pretty dirty, but it will filter out all the yeast and anything else that could potentially cause re-fermentation. And uh, it makes it crystal clear. Perfect, and you're a master at this. <laughs> Just say yes. Yes, I am. Nailed it. Just like in the craft beer world, barrel aging has taken off in popularity. Brent, we get to sample some barrels. Like one of my favorite activities. Mine too. <laughs> awesome. What are we going to be trying? Oh, we're going to be trying episode 13. Oh, this is exciting. One this of my is... favorites. So, step one, sanitize. Yep. Excellent. Now I got to rip this thing out. Yep. Bung. You can. They're a little. Whoa. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yep. There you go. Got it. Okay. Put this all the way in. Beautiful. Brett and I here, we just pulled samples directly from the barrel. Now step two of the process is a little, a little sensory analysis. Is that correct? Yeah, we're trying to figure out, you know, are the barrels progressing the way we were anticipating? Are they going fast enough, not fast? I mean, the thing is you can't control once it goes into the wood, changes in temperature make a big difference, humidity makes a big difference. So if we have any exceptional samples today, we know we've got a pretty good barrel over there. We're not going to package all of the barrels, so if there's anything exceptional right now, we're gonna try and take a blend of the best barrels that we can, and that will be the release. 24 is smelling good. Yeah, it seems great to me. I mean, you can definitely get the sweetness of the honey, too. It's there for me. That is where the magic happens. So hopefully the rest of these samples are gonna go the same way. The samples we pulled actually tasted great, but I was ready for some of their finished product. First, we're going to take a quick break, so don't go anywhere. When we return, we'll bust out some Necro Mango Con and fire up the zombie killer as we wrap up our visit to Bee Nectar Meadery. Jack Link's Jerky presents Versus. As you can see by our irrefutable science, Jack Link's has more protein and better music than these other snacks. Jack Link's Jerky beats the snack out of other snacks. Introducing Jack Link's Extra Tender Steak Strips. Welcome back to Pure Brews America. Thanks for sticking around. We've been having a sweet time here at Bee Nectar and it's about to get even better as I swing by their tap room. We normally are drinking beer on this show. Today, 
we're drinking some meat. You're gonna have to talk me through kind of some of the flavors that I should be looking for, beer versus mead. All right, you can do that. What are we doing first? Uh, this one is going to be called Tuco Style Freak Out after Breaking Bad, you ever watch that? <laughs> yes. So this guy right here is all Mexican orange blossom honey. It's agave nectar, lime juice, and lime zest. This actually came off of a, a margarita mead that Brad made way back in the day. This makes me so happy. It makes me happy that you're happy. The, the tartness is there, the limey kind of tartness and, and citrus. I absolutely, I could drink a lot of this. Actually, you have a really good palate after all because this won the Michigan Mead Cup Golden Best of Show in 2015. Nailed it, guys. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Zombie killer. This is the zombie killer. This is what keeps the lights on at Bee Nectar. So that's all fresh apple cider. It's cherries and honey. The first thing you get is that cherry right off the right off the bat. And I love cherries, especially Michigan cherries. There's nothing you can't love about this. This is actually much drier than I expected. I expected a lot more sweetness to it, but it is it is it's wonderful. Yeah, when we pick the names, like we want to pick something that, like, if you see it on a menu, you're gonna be like, what? I think the the first name that got vetoed was. Like the sound a zombie makes. And yes, everyone else looked at the guy like, really? Like what? What is this? <laughs> the labels—they always crack me out in your descriptions. I mean, they're entertaining. I, don't know, I really do dive into it and, and get to the details so that like people that can geek out on these things are like, I know every part of that movie and like I find it and I will I'll put it in there. And you do a great job. I mean, you design every single one of these. Everyone but Zombie Killer, yeah. All right, here we go. So the next one we're gonna do is called Kill All the Golfers. Kill All the Golfers was after an Olive Palmer, lemonade and iced tea kind of thing, right? And then anywhere to stop to make sweet tea, this really comes through as that for me. Wow, so. this is cool. You're right, I, because I've had this before, and now that you're saying Arnold Palmer and all of these tea notes, it's all I'm getting. So the dude's rug, uh, you know, just really chied the room together. You stole my line, man. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, she stole it before I did. I stole it from her. So uh, with this one right here, it's fresh pressed Michigan apples cider. Uh, we have chai tea. So we have this really cool blend of chai tea that we do. So if you're into the chai tea beverages, I think you're really going to like this one. Well, cheers. Thanks for letting me drink through all your product. And now that we're up to speed on what they currently have on tap, let's take a look at a new sour program they're experimenting with. So we're doing a Pure Brews collaboration. Sure are. I'm excited. We're supposed to be collaborating on this. What are we doing? Well, I thought this was all your idea. I just took your what? email and, you know, went verbatim. Sour everything. Yeah. No, I'm joking. I love sour beers, but this is all your idea. You know, the, one of the things we've been wondering is, is it possible to make a really good sour mead? This is what experimental R&D bee nectar looks like. Yep. Some drills, some small five gallon buckets of honey. And this is actually how bee nectar started. Um, Brad did very similar practices in his basement with this. We're gonna make a high alcohol, around 15%, big cherry mead with a blend of different, you know, as wine yeasts, beer yeasts, as well as Britannomyces, Lactobacillus, and the souring organisms, all those fun little bugs that are gonna turn our sweet little mead into something that's possibly gonna be a little sweet and sour. That's what we're hoping for. This is the most beautiful collaboration because two of my favorite things on this planet are anything sour and anything cherry. You nailed it. Yeah, well, I mean, it was your idea in the first place, remember? <laughs> <laughs> we're done with that, so you can lick it all you want. <laughs> So good. Dude, we had a crazy time today at Bee Nectar. Cheers! Pure Brews America is sponsored by Fago, the original craft pop that's been made in Michigan for 110 years. Pick up a two liter or six pack today to create the perfect craft cocktail.
When we started 20 years ago, the beer business was tough. So we played it safe and brewed the beers we thought people were expecting, which led us pretty much right to the edge of bankruptcy. So we figured we may as well start brewing beers that we liked. Bigger, bolder, aromatic, in-your-face beers. And luckily, it turned out a few other folks enjoyed those beers as well. So now, if it's brewed by us, it's really brewed for us. That's the secret. But you just told everybody. <laughs> At Meyer, we believe in the people who believe in themselves and bringing our customers the very best local craft beers from all over Michigan, like Founders, Bells, and Shorts. Because things that come from nearby don't just taste better and fresher. They help keep our prices low and our communities thriving. I'm Mike Stevens. And I'm Dave Ingers. Look for us and great beers from all over Michigan at your local Meyer. Welcome back to Pure Brews America. Did you know that there are over a hundred different beer styles? This variety creates countless opportunities for healthy and delicious pairings from our friends at Larissa's Kitchen. With so many options, where should you start? How about Larissa's Sweet Chili Premium Pork Cuts? I recommend a porter to cut the heat and richness of the cane sugar, garlic, and red pepper that Larissa's Kitchen puts into their Sweet Chili Pork Recipe. Upland's Bad Elmer's Porter is a perfect pick, but you could easily pair the Sweet Chili with Founder's Porter, Panther from Rheingeist, or Bell's Porter. So visit your local Meyer store today to try Larissa's Kitchen. The passion in every bag makes these protein snacks a perfect pairing with your favorite craft beer. For over 20 years, Meyer has committed to craft. Today, they've stocked their shelves with hundreds of your favorite craft beers to create the Beer Frontier. The Beer Frontier is your in-store and online home for discovering and exploring the best breweries and beers. Meyer serves a very large, diverse population all over the state, and if more people have an opportunity to try our products, it's always wonderful. I mean, one thing I really like is I go into a Meyer and there's going to be a lot of Michigan beers. You know, there's definitely very supportive of, of the local craft and not just the big national distributed craft brands. Being able to get our, our beer into bottles and have that be on the shelf. You've had it in a bar, you've tasted it, like, wow, this is really great. And being able to just go into any grocery store and find it, it's been really helpful for us. So our package, our bottle growth has really been a big, the biggest part of our growth the last couple of years. And, you know, Meyer's got to be the biggest, one of our biggest accounts that we work with and it's, it's great. Meyer has been really interesting be, as they've expanded in the state of Indiana and in the Midwest where we sell beer they've, they've probably been one of our fastest growing uh, if not the fastest growing retailer from the sales perspective and so I think they've done a really nice job of putting together a great craft beer section in the store and, and we continue to, to collaborate with them and they're super supportive of us getting new beers to market and we really really appreciate that. Stay up to date on what's hot with beer release updates. Get the latest announcements on your seasonal favorites as well as brand new releases. Be smart, be adventurous. Join us on the Meyer Beer Frontier. We've had a blast this season visiting several of Hopcat's incredible locations. This week, we're spotlighting Hopcat Detroit, which opened their doors in 2014. It just seemed like the right time for us to go to Detroit and just happened to be at the same time everything started to take off. So actually I bought that building out of, from the land bank, the Detroit land bank. It was in receivership vacant and since then the neighborhood has really just taken off. It, uh, it was lucky timing, frankly, to try to get in there and now I think it would cost us a lot more. Just a few blocks down from Hopcat on Canfield, you'll find Jolly Pumpkin's Detroit location, which features some of the country's best sour beers. Right across the street from Jolly Pumpkin is the city's oldest operating brewery, Motor City Brewing Works. And adding to the excitement of the area, Founders has announced that later this year, they're opening a 14,000 square foot tap room less than a mile away, truly making Midtown Detroit a Michigan beer mecca. From the beginning, Hopcat's monthly beer dinners have been a delicious evening of food pairings inspired by the tasty liquid from a brewery. This month, Hopcat has quite a lineup. Visit Hopcat.com or ask a server for tickets. Now it's time to make this delicious craft cocktail, featuring the award-winning Zing Zang Bloody Mary Mix, Tito's Handmade Vodka, and Velasic Purely Pickles. 
start with a scoop of ice. Then add two ounces of Tito's handmade vodka. Next, shake the Zing Zang Bloody Mary mix, which is made from seven vegetable juices and 14 spices and seasonings. Then fill to the top of the ice and give it a couple shakes. Now the secret step is to pour into a glass and top it off with a little of your favorite craft beer. Finally, it's time to garnish your drink with a Velastic Purely Pickle, which has no preservatives, artificial flavors, or high fructose corn syrup. Feel free to add some olives, a lime, and even a beef stick if you're feeling adventurous. Now you can craft a perfect Bloody Mary quickly and consistently at home. When Pure Brews returns, we peel kiwi and play ping pong at Upland Brewing Company, one of Indiana's oldest craft breweries. Velastic Pickles is a proud partner of Pure Brews America and the craft beer industry. Don't forget to pick up a jar of Velastic Pickles to enjoy with your next craft beverage or Bloody Mary. At Planters, we're all about great taste, and we thoroughly test all our nuts for superior craveability. Hey, Richard, check out this fresh roasted flavor. Looks delicious, huh? Yeah. Richard, try to control yourself. I can't help it. And how about that aroma? Love that aroma. Ooh. Craveability approved. Ooh, can I have some now? Sure. Help yourself. Wait, what? Irresistibly Planters. We don't frost brew our beer, and hot chicks won't appear if you drink it. Our beer doesn't come in a bow tie shaped can or need color indicators to tell you it's cold. It won't be delivered by Clydesdale horses, and to tell you the truth, we aren't the most interesting people in the world. The fact of the matter is, we don't tell stories, we just let our beer do the talking. Back in the early 2000s, Janice would have dropped off all four of her kids at soccer practice after a sit-down dinner. But Janice is a mother today, so all four of Janice's kids are on four separate paths of self-discovery, which occur at four different times in the afternoon, leaving a total of four minutes for her kids to eat. Even though dinner time has become less strict, we remain strict as ever when it comes to our standards. Made with premium cuts of 100% kosher beef, so you can feel good feeding your family no matter what time dinner is. Hebrew National, we remain strict. Hey, it's Shannon Long, and today we've headed south to Bloomington, Indiana to take you behind the scenes of Upland Brewing Company. Who doesn't love Upland? You live in Bloomington, you love Upland. Upland's a lovely place to be. It makes makes life good. This is literally our favorite place to be in Bloomington. They make great beer, they serve great food. It's great taste, they've got a large variety. We have a good time here. No, the beer is good. I, I appreciate good craft beer. I love this Upland beer, love it. Upland's name was inspired by the beautiful Indiana uplands that surround it. The hilly region, like the brewery itself, is rather unique to the state. So Upland was founded at the end of 1998, uh, back when there were only five craft breweries in the state of Indiana. Uh, it was founded by a friend of mine. They had a great first seven or eight years. I was sitting in the pub, having lunch one day, and uh, he came over and he said, yeah, I'm thinking about selling the business. And I said, well, I'd be interested in taking a look at it. So that's how I got involved, and that was about a little over 10 years ago. And then we moved into this facility, which is about 40,000 square feet, and has really allowed us to expand our core beers. But it may be even as important, it allowed our original facility to be converted over into sours only. So that was the next phase of expansion that happened in 2015, 2016. I love sour beers. We're standing in the wood shop of Upland. You manage the sour beers and everything else production related here at Upland. Pretty much the best job ever. <laughs> Can't complain, uh, feel pretty lucky. It's just wonderful to work with a group of guys that are so passionate and can really develop some interesting, interesting beers. All of our sours that we make are all aged in wood. We've got 90 barrel, 100 barrel, and 60 barrel fooders, and those aging process can, and this fermentation can take anywhere from three to four months up to three years. This fermentation is creating all kinds of really beautiful flavors. Eli, you today are the Kiwi man. 
You've got a whole team of Kiwi people here. What exactly is this all for? So uh, this is for our fruited Kiwi sour ale. Uh, we get whole Kiwis in and we just need to remove the skins. How many days are you guys going to be doing this for? We've, <laughs> we've been doing this for about two weeks now. Wow. This is like the most craft beer thing ever. <laughs> right, I mean, yeah. the labor intensive, the heart and soul. It's very labor intensive, but it's part of the, the flavor or the... <laughs> and the only thing more delicious than the fruit is the sour beer they make with it. So I stopped by the brewery tap room for a little taste. All right, Adam, they let you out of the lab to come Finally. drink beer with me. <laughs> Time to get a little sour. Yeah, get a little funky. This is what we're calling a new American sour, so it's a little... Um, less intense. This spent time in wood probably about nine months before then we added apricot puree and some ginger. You're hitting every note that I want yeah. you to. This is great. There's an artist that produces these, these works and we take little snippets of various parts of his work. We think they're really attractive on the shelf. You know, it's a blending of colors, which is essentially what we're doing in our sour program is we're blending all these different barrels and tanks together. So okay. tell me about this one. Sure, so this is our uh, Belgian wit beer. We've been making this beer a long time, so Lots of lots of Hoosiers have enjoyed this beer for many years. Oh, such a refreshing beer. Thank you. Oh my goodness gracious. Champagne Velvet. Yes. This doesn't look like an Upland beer to me. Well, we uh, brewed this beer back in 2013 for the first time. It was our 15th anniversary beer. We actually obtained a copy of the original a recipe from 1903. At one time, one of the biggest beers in, in the country, so. I can see why. It's like your classic American Pilsner on steroids and, and more awesome. This is our Dragonfly IPA, so this is our best-selling beer. So we're trying to find a nice balance between the malt character, some bitterness, and some really nice hop. I mean, if you're an IPA drinker, this beer is made for you. Dragonfly is my favorite. That's my go-to every time. I'm an IPA girl, but I really like Dragonfly. Dragonfly has really become our, our favorite. All right, well, thanks for drinking some beer with me. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming down. Absolutely. We were about to call it a day here at Upland until my competitive side got the better of me. All right, Patrick, I hear that you are the best ping pong player here at Upland Brewing. I challenge you to uh, best of three. Let's do it. Winner takes all of the beer home. All right. <laughs> I'm literally scared. <laughs> oh, God. Strong <laughs> star. Oh, my God. You're really good at this. Well, we're not brewing. We spent a lot of time practicing this, so it's... Oh, nice serve. Oh, I think I'm better when I am drunk. Yeah, right, that's the thing too. It takes a couple beers and then you. Oh, so that's your secret? I'm gonna go that way. Let's see it. Oh, <laughs> I'm done. That went about as poorly as I thought it was gonna go. You win, man. Good game, man. <laughs> Good game. Thanks so much for having me out to Upland today. We had an awesome time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.